murder plot. Wait till Dan Thorne hears of this. Wait. Here they come. Good. Highball freight number 56. Block. Entire line. Impassable. Hold all things. Get me Dan Thorne. Ford all along the main line. Oh, why don't somebody get me Dan Thorne? He's the only man can handle this. I'm trying to get him, trying to get him. Half my paperwork ruined again because he's out tramping the yard. When he should be here to give me authority. What's coming off around here? If you guys play the railroad anymore today, there's a landslide, a new cut. The entire division is held up like the peak of traffic. My schedule's all ripped to pieces, and we've had to hold up the limited. Hold up the Olympian? Will you walk your nut? Tell her to come through. What's the half a mountain slid on that track? I'll clear the track. Don't stand there looking at me, lift those red boards, and keep traffic moving. Go! Pass the boiler room to blow the whistle and get the red crew out. Okay. You, phone head around. I won't be out to dinner tonight. Give me a piece of that. You off this guy. Put the Olympian in the hole. <laughs> and it labor like that. It's made a hobo out of me. Can you imagine? On a day like this? The trouble with labor is the work that's connected with it. Now, I think that work is for workers. So I bother your head about it. Hmm. Hey, Joe! Keep this one moving, will you? Well, listen, Dan, we can't make it. We've got to send back for more men. What? Leave this large block another hour? Not on your life. Say, hey, listen, there's not a man in ten miles. Coran, boys, Coran. Come on, come on. Mr. Thorne, I'm a conscientious objector to manual labor in any form. Get over there, get over there. I yield only to superior force. Well, how did I overlook you? Come on, there. Get over there and get to work. What makes you think I will? I got a couple of very good arguments for that. Listen, I work when I want to, and I don't want to now. No?
Mr. Cohen, this is an extremely dangerous spot. Right here. Get over there. All clear, Dan. Okay. Take it away! Joe. See that fella down there? Put him in the caboose and throw a feet into him. But then he's only a tramp. I don't know. There's something about that guy. Take him along. All right. Hey, a couple of you fellas come with me. to do just that. But me, I'm going to give you a chance to put some of that guts into a job. Work on a railroad again? No chance. The rent's against you, Super. On this road and for me. I'm dang gone, and what I say goes around here. That means everybody, see? Yeah. Everybody but me. Joe. I'd like to have a new man be a cellar packer job. You know, Engine? Sure, I used to work on the Lake Division. Go ahead and meet Joe Curry, the roundhouse woman. Oh, glad to know you. Sam says you're all right. It's okay with me. Get busy on the big boy here. It's next out. Hey, on, boy. There's your job. Yeah. Huh? Them jail boxes ain't reached in a half an hour, it'll burn the heart out of you, big fella. Sure. But I ain't working, understand? I ain't working. Find way to live an engine. I was wondering if I could lay off on the next run. 
Why, Tom, you ain't put in for anything like that in 20 years. Well, you see, well, I... Oh, it's the wife. Ain't she no better yet? She's worse, Dan. Much worse. So you got everything you need? You got a good doctor? Yes, but... <laughs> I'm just a little frightened, Dan. You go right back to her, and don't you let me see you around these yards till she's absolutely all right. Thanks. Go on, go on. Hey, you know, Dan, if anything happens to Tom, he'll hit the booze again, sure. He knows better than that. Why, I'd have to rule him off the road. But you know what he used to be. That's right. Chuck, keep an eye on him. And if anything happens, let me know quick. thinking of me, ain't you? <laughs> sure, no man had a better daughter than I have. The bird will hear you. Uh, uh, this, uh, look here, will you? Uh, the Donahue brothers are, are giving away a kitchen table and two chairs to every newly married couple this month. Now, that's something for you to look forward to. Well, that's quite an inducement, isn't it? It is. Uh, I must show this to Dan. Oh! Don't you dare! Let, let go, let go! Why shouldn't I show it to him? He's a man that understands. Where, where is he? I haven't seen him today. What time is it? Oh! Oh, they, uh, another minute you'd be late. Not a chance. You wouldn't think I'd be late with you waiting for me, Mary, would you? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm going to enter a complaint. Somebody's getting a lot of attention around here besides me. Oh, uh, sure, go on, dear. You wouldn't be jealous of her own father, would you? <laughs> wouldn't I? Say, I'm likely to be jealous of anybody. What's that? Oh, yes. Say, Mary, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go down to the roundhouse. I got a new man down there. He's a floater, and his name is Doyle. Give him this bundle and this note and see what he does, huh? Now, Dan, I wish you wouldn't bother your head about those tramps. You know, it never turns out right. Mary, a fella can go wrong a dozen times, but if you're right once, it makes up for all the rest. Will you do it? Well, all right. Well, I got here just in time to do that. <laughs>
she's a lucky girl. I've often said that she's a lucky girl to be marrying a railroader and a fine-looking man, too. Hey, hey, stop throwing them apples. <laughs> Give me a match, will you? But you are, Dan. You are. Uh, maybe uh, not exactly handsome, but no, uh, no. But handsome is as handsome does. <laughs> Not exactly handsome. Why, my pan looks like a street before they laid the pavement down. You wouldn't find Mary saying a thing oh. like that. <laughs> no, you're going to make a happy den. I never failed to do anything I wanted to yet. You sure haven't, boy. You're always kingpin amongst us. Even in the old days. And ever since I got my smash, and you started to take care of pipe me and Mary... Pipe down. Why, you're more than just a man to us. You... Hey, stop it. You, 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 you have me blushing. Maybe I didn't say the right words, boy, but... You know how I feel, don't you? You don't owe me a thing. If it had been the other way around, you'd have done the same thing to me. Sit still, lad. I'll see you with it. Yeah, this is the right place. Come on in. Well, how do you feel? Okay, here. Come and have a bite to eat. No, thanks. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Meet Ed Ryan. We live here together. Ed, this is Larry Doyle. Hi. Glad to meet you. You better put in some fuel. We just took off the nose bag ourselves, but there's plenty of grub on the stove yet. And before you do that, maybe you better go upstairs and clean up a little. I left some clothes out for you. And when you're decent, why, come right on down. Thanks. I guess I need him with that. Go on. It's, uh, to the left. Hilda! Yeah? Set another place on the table and keep supper hot on the stove, will you? Yeah, me too. All right. Is that the, uh, boomer engineer you were talking about? Yeah, that's the kid. You should have seen him talk back to me. Try to fight me and him two days away from his last square meal. He's a game kid. I know that kind. They wind up in a jail or a general manager's job. Yeah. In a jail, most likely. I never saw one of those floaters yet that panned out right. Ain't you? No, I haven't. Well, you're looking at one right now. Say, if I hadn't got kicked in the pants by a couple of old rails like you, I'd have been a floater yet. That kid's gonna make a good hoghead. Say, what's happened to Mary? Is she coming down? <laughs> She's upstairs primping up for you. Of course, I'm glad to see you. 
Of course you're glad to see me. No, 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 Ed, I've got to get back to the shops. You tell Mary I'll see her later. Go on. Sugar and all right. Oh, Hilda. See that the food on the plates kept hot. Yes. Yeah. Easy off. Well, uh, where's Mr. Thorne? Uh, he's gone to the shops. Uh, sit down. Oh, thanks. I wanted to thank him for these clothes. They almost fit me. Uh, uh, sit, uh, sit down. Hilda will bring you in a bite to eat. Well, I ain't going to eat all alone, am I? No, I guess you'll have to. Dan and I have had ours. Oh, here's Mary. She hasn't had her supper yet. <laughs> guess you thought I was never coming down. <laughs> Mr. Uh, uh, Doyle, Doyle. Uh, this is my girl, Mary. Oh, we've been introduced before. Once by Mr. Overhalls and again by Johnny Towel. <laughs> sure, I said, she's my girl. <laughs> I should be saying, she's Dan Thorne's girl. She's going to marry Dan Thorne. Mrs. Thorne. <laughs> Mr. Thorne is certain Absolutely on time, I promise you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see if I can get up. Long distance, Mr. Thorne. Let me call me later. What? I can't talk to you right now. Call me later. I tell you, I'm not going to lay any more packages on that spur. Now, get that. Now, I. I tell you, every egg will arrive there intact if I have to lay a new road bed all the way from here to Chicago. Good bye. O'Doyle. Dan Thorne wants over the office. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, as soon as I wash up. What? Don't bother me! Imagine any man in his right mind picking up railroading as a business? No, sir. What? Uh, yes, sir. Who asked you anyway? Here. Yeah. Take this over to the roundhouse for me. No! It's nice you coming down here to see me. Dan, you forgot the handkerchiefs I laid out for you. Huh? So I did. See, that's thoughtful of you. So all right, man. So all right. Makes me feel kind of close to you when I see you do little things like this. Oh, it's, it's nothing at all, Dan. You're the thoughtful one. Look what you've done for all of us. Oh, it's a pleasure to do things for you, Mary. I don't like to have you running around among these tracks, but you're the only thing that seems to brighten up this tough old railroad yard, and, and it sort of keeps me from going off my nuts sometimes. You know, I don't know if I could go through with it if I didn't look forward to seeing you. Think you're doing down there, friend? Think wrong? Two dishes by this company is meant to work with. I guess I don't need to tell you how I feel about you, Mary. Dan, I think you've been wonderful. You want to see me? Well, hello, kid. How are you? Yeah. I've got something for you. 
Come in. Read this. I had not to take this from you. Oh, no. I want to be moving on. I don't think I'll ever be happy around here. <laughs> what do you mean, happy? You're going to stick here because I tell you, see? I guess you know what I want to say. Oh, no, well, don't say it. Hello, hello, Dan. Say, this is Chuck. Say, old Tom Johnson's wife died this morning. Yeah. He's on the loose. He's in that joint down by the lower yards. I did what I could, but after she passed away, I couldn't hold him. Okay, Dan. I'll keep it to myself. Mary, I'm sorry. I've got to believe you. I've got a tough call and Dan, I've got to Dan, you'll be go. back in time for the party tonight, won't you? Party? What party? The old-timers' picnic. By golly, I forgot all about it. But I can't go anyway, Mary. Oh, you have to go, Dan. No, I can't. This is very important. I got it. You can go with Larry. No. No, I want to go with you. No, 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 no. Now, listen, Mary. This is very, very... Now, you haven't got much more time to dress. You better... And say, Larry, there you are. You can be celebrating your new rating and, and help me out at the same time, huh? And I'll, I'll try to drop in later. Huh? That's fine, that's fine. Well, so long, so long. I guess that settles it. I guess it does. Do you want to go with me? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please to the next feature on the program. That mighty spectacle presented by our own boys and on our own engines. A tug of war between two colossal moguls of the run.
I see uh, Wall Street has stopped again today. <clears throat> Scram! The hospitality of this place is absolutely appalling. get that way. Hey, give me a shot of that stuff, will you? Well, here's to you, Tom. <sighs> you can't do that. Why can't I? I guess a couple of old friends can have a drink together, huh? Yeah, but you're the boss of this little division. You've got to think of the railroad. Well, for that matter, you're an engineer. You don't think a couple of drinks is going to hurt your throttle hand, huh? Come on, let's make a night of it. It's no use, Dan. I'm through. She's gone. She's all that I had. I'm through. I gotta quit, I tell you. I'm gonna quit. Quit, huh? I never thought I'd hear Tom Johnson say a word like that. Are you turning yellow? No, Dan, no. Now, what else would you call it, you quitter? Oh, but you don't understand. Yes, I understand. Your heart's broke because your wife's gone. But do you think you're going to help matters with that stuff? Now, we're railroad men. we got to keep the schedule. What right have we got to drink? Hold the throttle. Running a train with lives depending on us. No, we got to keep them trains moving. That's our religion, Tom. That's our life. That's what Bess used to say. That's the way I felt first. When I first met her. And that's how she'd want you to be now, Tom. That's how you are. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's go. like this does to you. Just look at them stars. And that moon looks like a big headlight, don't it? And that soft breeze from the river. I never heard you talk like that before, Larry. Well, why shouldn't I? Don't you suppose I've got feelings? Oh, Larry, look!
And that was uh, young Larry Doyle's whistle, wasn't it? Yes. He's taking the general manager's car and the dynamometer back to the yards. Hmm. He hasn't been around here much since the old timers uh, party. No. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Dan Thorns worked wonders in that boy, Mary. Well, I think Larry deserves a little credit himself. No. No. Dan Thorn was responsible. Dan Thorn, Mary. He's a great man. I know. You needn't worry, Dad. I'm going to marry him. your road for a good many years. And I cannot understand why I should be jiggled around this, this railroad yard for three or four days. It's absolutely imperative that I arrive at Chicago before the 19th. Everything depends on it. Why can't you furnish me with adequate transportation to take me to my destination? Professor? The entire road is at your service. See that train down there? Yeah. That train goes straight through to Chicago. Sir? With my company. Thank you. I shall recommend this road to all of my friends. Thank you. Everything all right as usual. Come on up and I'll make out your report for you. Right. Oh, by the way, uh, I got what you wanted. Huh? You know, that, uh... Oh, 
Thanks. See you later on. Yeah. Joe, I want to talk to you about those new horses over here. of this dance business. Besides, gotta go over and see Ed Ryan. I got a surprise on him. Big surprise. Excuse me? What does he mean, he's got a big surprise? Uh, uh, folks! Folks! And, and, and ladies. <laughs> I'm not much at speech making. So, uh, I ain't gonna make no speech at all. <laughs> well, anyway, this, uh, this Stan Thorne. Hey, Stan, come on, come on, get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, he wants to tell you is that, uh, that I'm gonna have a vacation. Good. <laughs> Well, well, I seem to be a kind of a popular guy around here. <laughs> Everybody's glad I'm going. <laughs> well, that wasn't what I wanted. What I really wanted to say was that, um... Oh, well, Mary Ryan and me is going to be married. Oh, What is it? What is it? What is it? What? A washout? Dan. A washout, huh? Well, I'm not going. I'm not going. I don't care if it's the main line. I don't care if the whole system falls apart. I wish every train on the line had gone to the ditch. It had to happen tonight. The one night I've been saving. All right. I'll tell him you're not going. That's... Uh, here, you, who says I'm not going? Give me that phone. Yeah, get the wrecking crew out. Fire up the wrecking train. Get all the emergency crews together. Sure, I'm coming. Hey, get your car out. You're going to drive us to the yard. Joe, come on. Boy. Mary, too bad it has to be. Oh, this is a shame, Mary. I'm awfully sorry. Yes. Yes, it's too bad.
Don't, Mary, don't. <laughs> oh. oh, I can't go through with it, Larry. I can't, I can't. You've got to go away with me. You can't marry him. You know that, don't you? Don't you? Oh, Larry, let's go away now. Tonight, before he knows or guesses. No, I've got to talk it out with him. Oh. I've got to tell him. You can't talk anything out with him. He'd kill us. Or, or maybe you'd kill him. Either way would be worse than crazy. Oh, I'm no good doing this to Dan Thorne. Don't you think it, it, it hurts me? He's taken care of us ever since I was a kid. But I can't love him that way. He'd know in the end and would hurt him more. He's iron and steel and fire. He's not flesh and blood like you and me. This is something greater than railroads, greater than him. Yes, I guess it is. You're right. You have just time to flag the express for Chicago. Hurry, Dan, pack your things.
about it. It's switch. I guess. Oh, no, no, Larry, no. Now, Mary, get off the track. No, I won't leave you. Oh, please, Mary, get away. No, no I won't leave you. Catch me here, Mary. No, please won't. go on away. No, get no. off the track, please. I, oh, I won't. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. Go ahead, Dan. It's all right. I got it coming to me. No! No, Dan! No! No, no! Doctor. It's bad. But, Doctor, you've got to save him. There must be something. Only a brain surgeon with complete modern equipment can help him. There's nothing like that this side of Chicago. He can't live more than five hours. But our fastest run to Chicago is seven hours. We haven't got a through train on the schedule till this afternoon. The only chance to get into Chicago in five hours. right now. Hundred lady, put it up to two hundred. Okay. Oh, gee, it's tough. There must be something we can do. Not a thing. It's a six-hour record run. It can't be done. I can do it. What? I can do it. Why, don't you realize you couldn't keep that engine on the rails going a hundred miles an hour all the way to Chicago? It can't be done. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Maybe it can. Put that in my special. Give it right away over everything. You bet. In that cab. Look here. This means sidetracking everything on the way. The Olympian, the Pioneer, the whole timetable. Why, this will cost a fortune. And all for one man. 
For one man, you don't seem to understand. This isn't only Dan Thorne. It's every railroad man everywhere. Here. Hold everything east on the division. Okay. Pick me Wayburton and hips on the wire at once. Right. Red board as far east as Markham City. All right. Yes. Yeah. Hey, give me that. Give me that.
the last time you'll ever ride this road. Uh, if, if it's any news to you, it's the last time I'll ever ride any road. Ah, uh, come on. his own wish that he'd come back here and die in his own division. That's a funny remark for Dan Thorne to make. I can't believe he wouldn't get well from anything if he wanted to. I guess that's the trouble. He just doesn't want to get well. You know what it is he wants. Oh, 
Dan. Don't look at me like that. It's all right, Mary. It's all right. You don't understand, Dan. I've come back to you for always. I understand. I understand. No, Dan, no. I mean it. I'm never going to leave you again. The other was a mistake. Hello, kid. Thanks, Dan, for all you've done for me. For you. You didn't think I was going to see the limited wreck, did you? Oh. Lying like this gives a man plenty of time to figure things out. I never had so much time before. You know, people have got to marry the things they love best. You two, each other. <laughs> Me, the railroad. Kidding myself. Dan. Dan. about Dan Paul, ain't it? I hear he's all true. And he used to be a nice fella, too. <clears throat> come on, get the lid out of your feet, or I'll come out there and knock the... This ain't no smoking room, there's a railroad. 